Welcome to today's webinar. My name is Kathy, and I'll be your host for today's webinar, The Internet and Phones Are the New Showroom. We've got a great agenda lined up for you today, but before we begin, let's walk through how to navigate through this webinar. On the webinar toolbar, click the orange arrow to open up your view. To switch audio options, select your preference here. There are handouts from this webinar available for you to download. Simply go to the handout section of the webinar toolbar to download the PDF document. If at any time during this presentation you have questions, please use the questions box and type your questions and I'll get to them, them to Sean at the end of the webinar. I would also like to invite you to visit dealer.autobytel.com to watch our ongoing training series. Simply click on Dealer Corner and go to Training. These short videos are designed to help you sell more cars and are great for helping anyone gain more knowledge about the Internet shopper, buying behaviors, and strategies that work. At this time, I'd like to introduce you to today's presenter, Sean Bradley, founder of Dealer Synergy. Sean began his career on the front lines as a car salesman. During that time, he developed award-winning sales strategies that ultimately resulted in his rapid advancement through the ranks. In 2004, Sean started his company, Dealer Synergy, a well-known and widely utilized training and consulting company in the automotive industry. To date, Sean, along with several of his clients, have been featured on 22 automotive sales magazine covers. So without further delay, Sean, welcome and thank you for joining us today. Thank I'm you so really, much. You're welcome. I am really excited to see what you have to share. So Cass, can you guys see my, my PowerPoint? We can, Sean. You are ready to go. And we have our first comment for you. Sean is awesome from Marcus Thompson. <laughs> ah, well, listen, Autobite tells awesome and you dealers are awesome as well. We just made history. We have officially more people signing up for this Autobytel webinar ever in the history of Autobytel webinars. So shout out to Autobytel, shout out to the dealers. And Cassie, what you don't know is that we're Facebook streaming live as well. So we're going to even double dip the audience. So you guys ready to get going? Let's do this. This is my encore presentation from NADA 100, which is titled The Internet and Phones Are the New Showroom. All right, so we're going to just dive right into it. Everybody's seen the movie The Matrix, of course, and when Morpheus turns around and goes to Neo, and he turns around and, and gives him the choice, you know, the blue pill or the red pill, in my case, the orange pill, of course, it's basically you've got a choice. After this webinar, you've got a choice to turn around and just keep doing the things that you're doing, or you've got a choice to eat the orange pill and understand reality that the internet and phones are the new showroom. A very good friend of mine, uh, his name is Joe Calla. Joe Calla is, an other, is another automotive internet specialist, and he says this phrase, which I love. Write this down, guys and ladies. Okay, Information without application is just information. However, information with application equals transformation. So that's my disclaimer. If you're going to take time out of your day making money for yourself, your dealership, to listen to this webinar for me and Auto by Tell, I want you to remember to do the most important thing is apply that information to crush it right after this webinar. All right, so again, let's try to change your paradigm, the way that you perceive things. Now, some of you might know or might not know that I wrote an international bestseller called Win the Game of Googleopoly, and I'm signed to Wiley Publishing, and I got to tell you, it was one of the most incredible experiences that I've had. In order to turn around and write this book, we had to do a lot of uh, research. We had to, you know, fact check and get it vetted, and I actually am proud to say that I, I looked at a, a really tight network of automotive digital experts in and out of our industry to come up with my book, and what I found is just mind-blowing. I want to share with you some of the details. Fact, this is from Google, not for Sean Bradley. Over 80% of all transactions start on search. Again, over 80% of all transactions start in search. People find their husbands, their wives, their pets, their medication, and absolutely, they're going to find their automobiles. Now, in addition to just Google being such a, a, a dominant thing, let's go through Amazon. I mean, look at the stats right here that's blown me away. Like, uh, you know, Amazon, 244 million Amazon users, 54 million Prime users. You know what I found is sad? is that Sears and Macy's, God love those stores when I grew up with them, but they're going out of business. They're shutting their doors in record 
uh, numbers. It's almost how like the newspapers became nothing but hamster cage padding, right? Well, a lot of these brick and mortar facilities are getting consolidated, getting run out of business by the Leviathan of Amazon. Now, follow my train here. I'm just building up the whole case story about how powerful the internet is. Now, as far as the automotive marketplace, some of the stuff is refresher. Let me just bang through it so we can get to the meat and potatoes of the, of the presentation. Twelve and a half hours spent shopping online for the average internet prospect. 7.9 websites visited before buying. 45% of time is spent on third-party sites. 75% of purchases come from the internet for new. 77% of purchases come from the internet used. Leasing accounts for 29% of all new retail sales. Now, think about that. That pretty much shows that the internet and automotive is just, just ridiculously powerful. Going through some mobile marketplace data, 34% only use mobile devices to read email. 80% of internet users own a smartphone. 48% of consumers start mobile research with a search engine. 33% of consumers start mobile research with a branded website. 26% of consumers start mobile research with a branded app. 50% of smartphone users grab their device immediately after waking up. Now, let me just stop for a second, and before I go into more mind-numbing data, I want to just pull some stuff that's really kind of powerful. You ready? Over 80% of all transactions on internet purchase requests, people are going to buy something different. This is pretty thorough. Over 80% of the uh, internet purchase requests that a dealership receive, receives, people are going to buy something different. A data from Autobytel, I'm going to source Autobytel, and my friend Scott Peckstein, you know, which just kind of changed the way I look at the game, 46% of new car leads buy used cars. 22% of used car leads buy new cars. Why am I killing you with this data? Because when I get into the rest of this presentation in the next five to ten minutes, it's all going to make sense because I don't believe in smoke and mirrors. I don't believe in just giving you an idea. It's all backed by science, mathematics, and data. Now, to continue the automotive mobile marketplace, 88% of, of customers use the Internet to car shop. 46% use multiple devices to get a dealer um, to get to the dealer's website. 14% use mobile to get to dealer's websites. I'm going to use the 88% real quick. The 88% is the low end. It goes up to 99%. So anywhere from 88 to 99% of, of people, before they step into the dealership, they go online to do some form of research. Going through a little more of the data stuff, guys. Don't let me. Don't 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 tap out. Don't give up. The stats are almost over. 59% of time is spent online before purchase. 71% is research, 68% searching vehicles, 64% comparing vehicles, 63% find current car worth, and 46% locate dealer to get info. Now, let's get that out of, of the way. Now I'm going to share with you, I don't know how many of you heard about Google Micro Moments. Let me explain to you what Micro Moments are. This is something that's very fascinating. So let's just pretend that you're, you're at your house, you got a bag of Doritos, and you're watching, you know, James Bond Spectre, and all of a sudden you see a sexy to death Aston Martin, right? And while you're watching the movie, without pressing pause, without doing anything, you know, to stop the, the, the movie, you're going to grab your phone, and you're going to ask Siri, or you're going to go to Google, or you're going to go to Safari, or whatever it is, and you're going to ask the search engine um, a specific question. What's that car in the uh, James Bond movie? So what's happening nowadays is that the Internet is so enveloped in our life. It's not just a, a recreational activity. We're consumed. We're enveloped almost like cyborg mentality where as we're doing one or two or more activities, simultaneously, we're having little Google micro moments, you know, asking questions, searching for pictures or images. We listen to a radio song. Oh, my God, what's that song? We turn around and, and, and you know, check it and find out what that song is. And then when we find out who the recording artist is, we turn around and want to find their whole life story. You know, if they're hip hop, who they're beefing with. If it's rock and roll, you know what I mean? What was their last tour? When's their next tour? So the internet is th the preeminent place. You know, again, radio, TV, newspapers, encyclopedias, we all know this. That's why you guys are on this webinar. They're all antiquated. I just want to hammer that part home is that the Internet is where everything is going, everything from shopping, researching, etc. I'm going to repeat that stat that I gave you from Googleopoly that I'm going to go into. My next part is over 80% of all transactions start on search. Okay, Sean, so, so what? Here's the thing that, that I'm going to skip through this. You can get the slide deck later. Here we go. That's what I want to get into. All right. So why do we care? Why, what does this all mean to us? If 
everybody's going on the internet, right? If everybody's going on the internet and calling a dealership, here's the next staggering number. Look at that. NADA says, NADA 2017 data, this is the most bleeding edge information, validates the average in-market buyer is only visiting 1.2 rooftops. What the hell is a 0.2 rooftop? There's no such thing. So it's one rooftop. Basically, folks, if you get them into the dealership, if you get them in from the phones and the internet, and you get them to the dealership, and they're qualified to buy a car, unless you screw it up at the dealership, they're getting spotted. I'm going to repeat that. Unless you screw it up at the dealership, they're getting spotted. Why? Because, the, again, the average in-market buyer, that means someone that's qualified to buy a car. I am not talking about people, I repeat, I am not talking about people that are upside down on their trade. I'm not talking about people that have bad credit, no credit, can't afford the car, don't want to afford the car. I'm talking about real in-market buyers that are ready to buy a vehicle. Guess what? If you get them to your dealership, they're getting spotted unless you mess it up. How do I know? NADA data validates it 1.2. So let me rewind here. Think about this. If 80% of all transactions start on search, if 90 to 88, sorry, 88 to 99% of Americans go online before they step foot into the dealership, and if you get them to the dealership, they only visit 1.2 rooftops. Folks, there's nothing, nothing, nothing more powerful than the Internet. Do you understand what I'm saying here? Nothing. Not your showroom, not, not you know, a direct mail piece, nothing. I'm a Franklin Covey certified trainer for over eight and a half years, almost nine years, and I got the honor to train under Dr. Covey before in Detroit. And one of the things, it's the third habit, right, which is put first things first. Another translation of put first things first is be careful of distractions disguised as opportunities. So attention dealer principals, attention GMs, attention internet directors, BDC directors, you've got to ask yourself, what is the one thing, not the 50 million things, what is the one thing that you could do to have the most profound dramatic effect in your organization? Dramatic pause. Yes, you got it, the internet. There's nothing more dramatic and profound that you could focus on that's going to yield you the massive amount of results. Now, I've taken dealerships from 75 units on the internet to 289 units on the internet at $2,300 a copy in less than a year. Now, I'm not saying that to, to, to impress you. I'm just trying to impress upon you the magnitude of internet success, internet sales success. Now, Let's go through the, the whole concept of the internet and phones are the new showroom. So check this out right here. I believe that most dealerships are upside down. You ever see, <laughs> you ever see like a weightlifter? I'm talking about like he's cock diesel, you know what I mean? He's got guns, he's got cannons, he's got a chest, but then he's got little chicken legs, he's all gumby legs. He's upside down, right? He's got all that top heavy weightlifter, bodybuilder physique, but then you could, you know, <laughs> He could blow on him and then he could fall over because he's got chicken legs. A lot of dealerships are upside down with their HR. They're upside down with their paradigm. They're upside down with their resources. They're upside down with their budget. You're still trying to sell cars like it's the 90s or it's the 80s. Hell, some of you like the 60s. Keeping it real. Get your Elvis on. You know what I'm saying? Like, again, you are setting up the dealership. NADA says that the average dealership has 10 salespeople, two sales managers, and a GSM, GM, and an F&I. Do the math, 10 salespeople and four to five managers to sell, on average, 96 mediocre cars. That means that the average salesperson only sells 9.6 units. What's the disconnect? The disconnect here is that there's a better way to do it, but you can't keep staffing resources and you know, human and money for showroom. Check this out. There's eight ways that a showroom salesperson could sell an automobile. There's eight ways. You've got walk-in service conversions, be-backs, phone-ups, internet ups, previous customers, referrals, and the lost art of prospecting. So I call this the money mind map. Again, there's eight ways that a showroom salesperson could sell an automobile. Sean, why do I care? Here's why you care. Everybody, if you're working at the dealership right now, stop what you're doing for a second. The next part, what I'm about to tell you, is going to change your career. Stop. Get off the phone, put the Doritos down, listen to me very carefully. I have spoken at over 210 NADA and NCM 20 groups. One of the largest NADA 20 groups, I can't call it out by name, it's very powerful, you know, Ford 20 group. And I'm sitting in there, and this is a real situation. I had a 300-car single point Ford dealership in the room that told me they had 27 salespeople. So I said, okay, great. You're selling 300 cars, 27 salespeople. They're like, yes, we rock. I'm like, all right, cool. How many deals from phone and internet? And they said 111. I said, oh my gosh, that's, that's, really, that's really bad. I'm, I felt bad for you. Like, what are you talking about? We sell 300 cars. 
I'm like, yeah, but volume hides mediocrity, guys. Check this out. Back it out. Back out the 111 from 300. You have 189 you know, units that you sold from other means from phone and internet. So now 27 salespeople, that's only seven units apiece. If you back out the 111 deals that came from phone ups and internet sales ups, and you divide the rest by the 27 salespeople, they only average seven units apiece. Now, how, is that, how does that make sense if there's eight ways to sell a car, and if you've got, that means that using six other ways besides internet and phones, they're only averaging seven units apiece. They're leaving a lot of money on the table. So if there's eight ways to sell, there's six ways left, look at this. If to increase just two units by 27 salespeople is 54 units, people. 54 units just on their showroom side that they're leaving, you know, at $2,200 a copy, my God, that's $118,000 a month times 12. You're looking at $1.4 million. This is big girl, big boy numbers right now. You know what I'm saying? They are leaving $1.4 million on the table and not even realizing it. And to add insult to injury, guess what else? They're paying stupid tax. You know what I mean? What does that mean? Not only are they only catching the low-hanging fruit, they're only maximizing the phone and internet, and they're neglecting the other six ways to sell automobile, but they're paying bonuses on it. Why? Because do the math. I mean, again, 300 cars, right, divided by 27 salespeople, they're averaging 11 units a piece. But you know what? Not everybody's doing 11 units. They've got people doing 15, 18, 20, 25, even 30 cars. They're paying volume bonuses. They're paying volume bonuses on 11, 15, 17, 20, 25, 30, whatever. And guess what? So they're paying people to neglect the other six ways. The dealership is so stuck on that 300 cars, 300 cars, yeah, they're not realizing the $1.4 million are leaving on the table. Dramatic pause again. Let that sink in, folks. That's really serious. And that's because they did not understand this mentality. If the phones and internet are the new showrooms, then what you need to do is you need to staff up the phones and internet like it's its own showroom. But before we get into that, what I want you to be able to do is I want you to turn around and look at this. You guys are all going to have a copy of my PowerPoint presentation. It's on SlideShare. AutoBytel is going to be able to provide that link to you. Use this. Every one of your salespeople should be trained on how to sell cars with eight different ways. I don't care if you have a BDC or don't have a BDC. All your salespeople need to be trained on the eight ways to sell. Again, walk-in, service, be back, phone ups, internet ups, previous customers, referrals, and the lost art of prospecting. Again, and if you do that, not only are you going to be able to get more out of your showroom, but now let's talk to the internet and phone people. So you get real close. Get real close to that screen, right? Build the infrastructure. Build the infrastructure. Build the customer factory that you want. Now, okay, how are you going to do that? You need to divide the leads amongst the sales force, you know, but there's two ways that you could do this. I'm not here to talk about BDC or I'm not here to talk about, you know, that there are successful dealers that do cradle to grave. And then there are successful dealers that do it the other way. You know, you could turn around and you could have Coke and a Pepsi. Tastes great. You know, it's cola, whatever. So you could turn around and have, you know, showroom people do this and you could have internet people do this. But the, the key to this is making sure you distribute the right amount of leads. Because follow me. If you just take, let's just use a quick number here. So I'm going to use a quick little calculator here. If you use, let's just say you have 500, 500 leads, right? And let's just say that you sell 50 units, right? That means there's 450 leads left over. Let's be specific. Let's just say from, Jan from February 1st to February 28th, you have 500 fresh leads. You don't have a BDC, but you're just, you're just farming those leads out to your showroom, even to your alpha ninja people. God bless you, right? What's going to happen? You spot 50 cars. Then what happens? There's 450 people that, are, that did not buy. They're either dead, bogus, changed mind, crazy, you know, still marinating, whatever, right? I'm going to tell you that at least 250 people are going to go to next month. So March 1st, you're going to start with 250 people just from February. But don't forget, J.D. Power, NAD, everybody that tracks this stuff, you know this stuff. Auto Vitale knows this stuff. The average buy cycle is 45 to 90 days. So it's not just 250. You're going to probably start with roughly you know, 300 to 350 leads March 1. So if you've got 350 leads March 1 that are over the last 90 days, plus you've got 500 fresh, the next month you have a total opportunity of 8 150 leads. This is one of the single most detrimental points that an internet department or BDC or dealership has is that you're drowning. I'm sorry, this is vivid. You're waterboarding on freaking leads. 
you're choking to death on leads sometimes, and that's not good. You need to have the proper infrastructure, whether it's salespeople or BDC, to be able to handle the intermediate and long-term follow-up. Folks, my company, myself, we work with OEMs, and that's one of the biggest things that a particular giant import OEM has a, a challenge with, is intermediate and long-term follow-up of leads. So here's the first breakout thing I want you to do. Write this down right now. This is for people that don't, you know, this is for people that actually get to watch the presentation live and not the recording, right? What I want you to be able to do is this. Add these three variables. Take February because it's only the first week of March. Take all the internet sales and BDC sales you had, you know, phone sales, what have you, from, from February. I want you to add three additional variables. The date that the lead came in on, the date that the lead closed, and then the window period. For example, came in on the first, closed on the third, it's a three-day window period. Then you add up all the window periods, and then you divide it by how many, um, you know, cars you sold, right? So that's going to give you your average selling period. I call it the gestation period. And here's the conundrum. I'm going to give a psychic forecast right now on this webinar that the majority of you are averaging a 7 to 11 day selling period versus the average buying cycle is 45 to 90 days. So think about that. If the average buying cycle is 45 to 90 days, but your average selling period is only 7 to 11 days, Lucy, you got some explaining to do. You feel what I'm saying? You got some explaining to do. What happens is, is it's impossible. Let me go back on this PowerPoint. Folks, look at this. Look at this right here. How in the world are you going to farm out X amount of leads to your showroom and handle the residual flow factor? If it's 500 leads, you're going to flow out there to your showroom and the residual flow factor, and there's still six other ways besides phone ups and internet ups, like walk-in service, be backs, previous customers, referrals, and the loss out of prospecting. The answer is you can't be thoroughly successful. I see a lot of these trainers out there, shots fired, that are talking all this crazy stuff, trying to be relevant. You know what I mean? No disrespect, but it's true. Again, stop trying to be relevant and start using logic and math. I'm a 30-car average person, verified. There's people that sell more cars than me, 40, 50 cars. Think about it. There's a reason why the average salesperson only sells nine cars. You cannot turn around and handle a ridiculous amount of leads effectively. Let's go through this. There's eight ways to communicate with the prospect, you know, or at least six to eight. You've got email. It's a, it's a 2 to 4% connection ratio. Phone calls, only 11 to 14%. percent you got text messages. you got Apple FaceTime. you got Skype. You've got video emails. You've got like, you know, my girl Elise Capart loves to talk about bomb bomb and you've got all these video email stuff. Shout out to Elise. Then you've also got, um, you know, social media direct message. You got chat. You got a myriad of different things. How in the world are you going to follow with a prospect through six, seven, or eight different communication mediums effectively, consistently for 45, 90 days and do all this stuff here? The answer is you're not and it doesn't happen. Let's keep it real. NADA is pretty freaking powerful. There's a lot of data in a multi-billion dollar industry. So if I was wrong, guess what? The average salesperson would sell more than nine cars. The average dealership would sell more than 96 cars. So let's stop bumping our head, doing the same thing over and over and over again, and pick up a page out of that book from 20 years ago. Who moved my cheese? The cheese has been moved. Let's catch up to it. Now, I'm sorry. I'm feeling the Holy Ghost right now. <laughs> you want to be able to have a hybrid. You do not want an internet department or BDC department. You want an internet dealership or a business development dealership where it's cohesive. First, you want to be able to have the showroom based on the eight ways to sell. They should be trained on projections, forecasting on the showroom floor on the eight ways to sell. They also should be trained how to be an entrepreneur. Folks, if you believe, if you really believe, and for my managers and owners listening here, if you actually said the words, car sales is like owning your own business, well, guess what? Newsflash. If you're not teaching them how to be a business owner, they're just an employee. The road to the sale and product knowledge is not being an entrepreneur. The road to the sale and product knowledge is not owning your own business. That means you could do a walk-around presentation and take it up. Okay? They need to know, salespeople need to know about projections, forecasting, time management, organization, video, social media, online reputation, PR, and a myriad of other things to be an entrepreneur. Or they're going to be like the majority of the country and average nine units apiece. Keeping it 100 with you guys right now. Now, once you've stabilized and you have the proper expectations for the showroom setup, now let's move on to the internet setup. How are you going to handle all the internet purchase requests? First and foremost, qualification. My gosh, 
You're not, there's technicians. I'm a car guy, man. There's technicians. You've got class A technicians, class B technicians. You've got different things. You've got truck technicians. You've got minivan people that specialize. Why are we going to let just everybody or anybody, average salesperson, you know, available salesperson, take an internet up, take a phone up without training and certification? It is just utterly, I'm sorry, absurd. It is what it is. You need, you spend all this money, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars on a monthly basis to generate the opportunity to have people unqualified, untrained, unmotivated, and unskilled to engage these prospects. And then you wonder why. Why? Why your average cost per sale is ridiculously high. And quote, NAD, average cost per sale is 640 per car when it should be $200 or less. Why? Mediocrity. So train and certify. Create qualifications for your internet department, your core department, like it's the military. And then if you use salespeople like point guards in our model or internet sales consultants that are acting like liaison, those are like the, the reserves or the National Guard. And then what you have is you've got the reservist, you know, you know the, 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 the tier two reservist, you know what I mean, that are going to be like your, your showroom salespeople. So I have three categories. I've got the internet frontline BDC or appointment setters, tier one, like your active military. Then you're going to turn around and have your, uh, your tier two, which is going to be your salespeople that are working officially with that department. I call them point guards or internet sales consultants or internet sales managers. An internet sales manager in my system is not a director. A director is a department head. An internet sales manager could be an internet sales consultant. Now, if they are doing a product presentation, demo drive, delivery, or they're inundated their day off or their shift off, then the final ring would be overflow goes to the show and floor, but even the show and floor needs to be segmented with people that qualify. Hey, managers, owners, you want to get more effective on your show and floor? You want to stop people from being late or doing things you don't want them to do? Guess what? They don't get any internet ups or phone ups unless they've got a benchmark minimum of excellence. I hate the word minimum, except I got to tie it to the word excellence. So we've got a minimum excellent standard here at, at ABC Motors. These are non-negotiables. If you want to partake in the internet uh, or BDC or phone ups, you have to have these qualifications. You need to go through this certification, adhere to these behaviors, these conversions. If not, then you're going to be in training until we decide to part ways. Now, after the certification, let's go through the lead distribution. This is a big one. My God. You guys, it's not just auto buy talent, it's all the lead source providers. You guys can't lead source, lead source providers because you think they suck. It's not the lead source providers. These people have been in business for 20, 22 years now or more. The leads are not the problem. It's either the process and the people. For example, if you've got 500 leads and you're giving it to two people, so follow me, you've got 250 fresh leads per person plus a residual flow factor and they've got to worry about chasing ups, do product presentation, demo drive delivery. You need to have proper lead allocation. Okay, so what I have here is this. On the showroom, if you are, not my recommendation, but if you're going to do it, here's the numbers. If you are going to give leads or forward leads or route leads to the showroom floor, then you should turn around and have, if you have a basic person or underperforming person, 40 leads maximum in a month, fresh, and it's including internet and phone. And if they're average or above average between 50 or 60, anything over 50 to 60, you know, internet purchase requests and phone ups, they're not going to be able to maximize the other six ways to sell cars on the Money My Map. They're going to dilute their effectiveness. They're going to dilute their value. They're going to be a jack of all trades and a master of none. Now, if you've got a BDC or call center representative, you're looking at 80. You know, if you've just got a, a person that's not doing product presentation, demo drive delivery, you're looking at about 80 purchase requests for somebody that's basic or brand new, hundreds average, 120s average, 150. I don't care if they're a rock star. Myself, I'm, I'm pretty damn good at this after 18 years straight doing internet sales in BDC. I would not want to have more than 150 purchase requests. Why? Because if I'm going to thoroughly follow up with the proper action plans between email, phone call, text, Apple, FaceTime, Skype, video emails, chat, social media, direct message, et cetera, et cetera, how in the world can I turn and effectively follow them? Let's do some basic math. They should, be handle a, they should make, your BDC rep should make 120 outbound calls per day. 120 times 11 or 14% is they're going to have about 14 to 16.8 connections per day. So again, I'm freestyling this. Look, this is my, you know, I don't have any computer in front of me. I'm just off of my head. So let's round it up to 17. If they make 120 calls a piece, they're only going to talk to 14 to 17 people a day. If you track the emails, the actual read open rates is about two to 4%. The majority of the internet, you ready for it? 18 years now? The, the hardest part of internet sales or BDC, folks, is getting the damn person on the phone. That's why you want to develop an infrastructure for follow-up. 
the internet department predominantly doesn't sell the car, they sell the appointment. But hell, to be honest with you, they, they, you know what they do more than sell the, you know, the appointment, more than even speaking to the customer? It's email, phone call, text, social media, video, video, video. It's follow up, follow up, follow up, follow up, follow up, follow up, follow up. That is what the department is all about. So what you want to be able to do is create that proper infrastructure and lead volume is so important. Too many leads, you're going to drown and you're not going to be effective. Not enough leads, you're not going to ROI. So either, you know, scenario one, you hit a massive point of diminishing return. Scenario two, you don't ROI and you're not profitable and we're just wasting everybody's time and money. Now, as I mentioned, here's the stat that's in here, okay? Emails have a 2 to 4% read open rate. Phone connections, 11 to 14%. Prime time to connect on the phones nationally. It might be different regionally, but this is a national webinar, right? It's 6 to 8 p.m. For the love of God, this is just majorly important because I have, I have deal with in the South. I love you. You know what I mean? I go to church on Sunday too, people. Guess what? You know, the problem is this, is if you close your doors at 6 o'clock, that's like getting to the Super Bowl and saying, thank you, been here, I appreciate you, see you next season. And if you close at 7 o'clock, that's like getting to the Super Bowl and playing, to, you know, uh, halftime and then saying, thank you, enjoyed halftime show, Lady Gaga, love you, got to go see you next year. It's utterly absurd. What you want to do is play the full game every day without exception, without fail. So you need to make sure that you have not only the right people, the right amount of people, but you're working the right schedule. Next, this is also an auto by tell stat. Thank you, Scott Peckstein. 98% of text messages are open or read. That's powerful. Video email, video email, video in an email has a 200 to 300% uh, percent higher read open rate. Again, you know, there's so many different things here. Social media is the number one form of communication. So do you see this right here? That's why it's not just about email and phone call. Because if social media is the number one form of communication, if video is the number one, you know, uh, you know, preferred content of consumption, right? Form of communication, social, content of consumption is video, then we need to absolutely make sure that we're diversifying all our prospects, new, used, CPO, etc., through a diversified onslaught of follow-up and engagement. Now, whew, so by the way, let me go through this. When I saw my certification, I know I talk fast, but I'm trying to pack 18 years into an hour webinar. Let's go. Now, if this is too much for you, this is recorded. You can rewind me at your pace. You can even put it on like 45, right, and go a little slower. But for everybody that's with me, let me keep it moving. What I want you to be able to do is CRM, my God. I have a very dear friend of mine who passed away, Tammy LeBleu. Anytime I get a chance, I'm going to shout this woman out. Everybody listening, go look up on Google Tammy LeBleu. She's a rock star. She averaged 47, and she, made, you know, she sold 47 and a half cars in one month, 400.5 in a year, and became the number two Nissan consultant in the United States. You ready for this? In Bossier City, Louisiana, population 62,000. She was making $390,000 on a show on the floor. That woman was a beast. She personifies what the automotive industry is about. You can make as much money as you can earn. You know how she did it? By mastering her CRM. Quote, Tamela Blue, by marrying her CRM. And again, if you want to really maximize your internet lead success, your BDC success, you need to not dapple, dangle, dip your toe in a CRM. You need to become an expert. Immerse yourself. My God, and stop making excuses about but, but, but nothing, man. Just man up, woman up. Go to YouTube, watch videos on your CRM, whether it's Vin Solutions, it's Dealer Socket, it's whatever your, your CRM to is, it's Auto Loop, it's, it's Car Research, whatever your CRM is, whether you like it or love it, you better own it and master it. You better love your CRM <laughs> or else it's going to be a bitter divorce, people. I'm telling you right now, you're not going to make the money. You're gonna, it's, like, yeah, it's like a bitter divorce. You're going to be broke and upset, just like a divorce. I'm telling you right now. So you want to make sure that you turn around and you marry CRM and, you know, happy wife, happy life, happy CRM, happy profits. Keep it real. Hashtag that. Happy CRM, happy profits. Hashtag. So I want you to understand that you want to set up email templates, action plans. You want to have a strategy to engage, phone call, email, text, chat, social media, FaceTime, Skype, etc. And you know what else? You need to train your people, not just your internet staff on CRM mastery, but your showroom staff on CRM mastery. Action plans, input work schedules, ensure that you are on the rotation to receive leads. Then there's a whole deeper level to this stuff of what's called intelligent lead routing. If you've got auto by tell leads, for example, you are able to turn around and theoretically route auto by tell lead as a source to a specific person. You could do route by make, by model, by OEM, by whatever. You know, as you get into this, 
you know, it's not just, ah, there you go, shotgun leads. What you want to be able to do is incorporate intelligent lead routing to put the ball in the hands with the most skilled professional on your team to handle that. I'll give an example. I'm going to speak from an example. I sucked at trucks. Man, I was a beast on 30, 33 units a month at a Lincoln Mercury Monster dealership, but I sucked at trucks. So I tell them, don't give me the truck leads. You're wasting them. Give me the minivan leads. Give me the Mazda 6 leads. Give me the millennial leads. Hell, I'm going to date myself. You ready? Give me the Grand Marquis leads. And I would crush it because, you know, I knew what I was good at. An internet director or sales manager needs to direct. Get it? Director, see what the title is? Be a shot caller, beat baller. There's some rap lyric right there, something. You want to be like, like Tommy Lee Jones from The Fugitive. Follow me. Remember that, the, that scene where he jumps over the, the waterfall and then they're like, okay, let's go. And Tommy Lee Jones says, no, I want divers in the water. I want choppers in the air. I want roadblocks and nobody goes home until I get a body. That, oh my God, I love that. That brought a tear to my eye. That's a shot caller. That's what the internet director or sales manager needs to do. You need to shot call. Who's going to be the most effective on your team to handle the leads? Make sense? All right, let's keep it moving. Now, fresh lead. I have it here, but it'll take too long to show you this, so I'm going to tell you what my follow-up is. This is critical, so all my competitors, if you're listening, go get your pencils out. This is going to be really game-changing for your clients. All right? So what you want to be able to do is this. I believe in a Blitzkrieg follow-up process. At Dealer Synergy, we have two processes. We've got a follow-up process, and we have an engagement process. A follow-up process and an engagement process. Now, before I explain it to you, I'm going to use what I, I like to give in my trainings, submission before, I'm sorry, position before submission. If you're into UFC, MMA, or college wrestling, or, or you, know, uh, you know, Roman Greco wrestling, there's a phrase that everybody knows. It's called position before submission. Before you try to put a, a pin or a choke or arm bar or whatever on your opponent, you want to get in the most tactical, best position. Why? Because if it goes to points, if you can't submit or pin them, then by being in the most tactical position, you're going to win on points. Or if you are going to leverage a choke, a submission, a pin, by being in the best tactical position with physics, torque, rotation, leverage, you'll be able to apply the finishing hold the right way to the best of the ability for maximum impact. Wow, that was deep, right? So check this out. Same thing here. There's rules of engagement. Email sells the phone call. Phone call sells the appointment. The appointment builds the relationship, product presentation, demo drive delivery. Yes, 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 yes. All those different communication tools like text, email, etc. Folks, I've been doing this almost two decades, almost 20 years straight. I'm not a rookie to this. I'm a veteran, you know what I mean, with like battle tested. And I'm telling you right now, the internet sale in 2017 is damn skippy still a phone sale. The majority, there's exceptions to any rule, right? But the majority is this. The internet deal, the internet lead converts to a phone opportunity. So the rules of engagement, not every single time, but the model you should follow is it is a lot easier to sell the phone call in email. The only thing in your email should be to sell the phone call. The only dialogue in your phone call is to sell the appointment. And once they show up to the appointment, you'll have the best tactical advantage, sight, sound, motion, emotion. And you'll be able to build the most amount of value. At the end of the day, uh, unless you want to give cars away, damn it, I'm not that type of guy. I'm trying to gross profit. As my man Jim Ziegler says, full price is fair price. Price is only relevant with the absence of value. Rewind that one more time. Price is only relevant with the absence of value. You could give cars away, and you could play the stair-step program and the, and, and the back-end money, and God bless you. But you know what? I want my cake, and I can eat it too. And I want sprinkles, and I want caramel. I want extra caramel. I love caramel. So I'm not going to just give cars away. I want to have volume and gross. And to do that, again, the rules of engagement, email sells the phone call, phone call sells the appointment, the appointment builds a relationship, product presentation, demo drive delivery. Now, here's what my follow-up cycle is. And we got uh, about, I don't know, about 18 minutes left, so I got I to speed this up. So what you have to do is this. For the first 31 days, it's email, phone call, email, phone call, email, phone call in your CRM. It's email, phone call, email, phone call, email, phone call, email, phone call, email, phone call. For the first 10 days, it's email, phone call, phone call. So another way of saying that is for the first 10 days, it's email, phone call, phone call, email, phone call, phone call. And then from day 11 to day 31, it's just email, phone call, email, phone call. Let me explain. You might think that's too much. No, stop it. That's why I've got dealers selling them 300 cars a month on the internet because they're not scared to ask for the money. You can't lose something you never had. All right? So you could call the ambulance and what people might get upset about. But guess what? You know what? I'm even going to be risque. If somebody says, email me only, and there's no phone number, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to do a reverse lookup. I'm going to go to Spokio.com, and I'm going to find them, and I'm going to call them. Why? Because I have 
the best probability of closing that opportunity by having a verbal dialogue. Now, will I lose somebody? Possibly, but you know what? Oh, I'm going here. You ready, Autobytel? You ready, my listeners? If the United States government is okay with and you know, deploying combat troops to risk their lives, and it's okay to turn around and win a war, this is not combat. I'm freaking okay of calling somebody if they say email me only. Let me repeat that. I'm okay if I call somebody that says email me only because I know I'm going to be more successful than the person waiting at the email machine and hoping that that person is going to manifest to a commission. And I don't want to inflame anybody. This is my way. This is 18 years of doing this to profound, prolific success. You don't have to take my playbook for it, but you listen to my webinar, so I at least give it a shot. It works. So let's go into this. Email, phone call, phone call. The reason why there's two phone calls is because you've got to do it at two different time periods. First phone call is going to be through you know, regular time, which is between 9 a.m. and 6 p.m., which is a big gap. However, the second phone call has got to be between 6 p.m. and 8 p.m. That's only a little window period. So what you want to be able to do is you want to be able to turn around, and this is important, you want to make sure that you are able to email and phone call, but have two phone calls for the first 10 days at two different time periods to maximize your probability of connection. So now, let me recap this CRM process. Email, phone call, phone call for the first 10 days. And then from day 11 to day uh, 31 or 30 or 28, depending on what month it is, it's going to be just email, phone call, email, phone call. Then on top of that, I'm going to make my, my uh, conservatives lose their mind right here. Right? On the even days, with opt-in, of course, I'm going to text message or do an Apple FaceTime or Skype. Ready? And on the odd days, I'm going to do a social media direct message or I'm going to turn around and do a video email. Now, that doesn't mean you wait to do text message. Again, if somebody engages you through text message or in your CRM, you've got the double opt-in, etc. I'm just telling you what my automated action plan is. And can I tell you something? My dealers that follow my system are extremely successful because they are magnifying and amplifying opportunities. At the end of the day, folks, this is not emotion. It's not magic. It's freaking math. The more people you attempt, the more connections. The more connections, the more appointments. The more appointments, the more confirmations. The more confirmations, the more shows. The more shows, the more sales. Okay, so here's the reality. I am, I am backed, and I have the chains that bind me are here to remind me what I've become. You understand me? I understand that there's only a 2 to 4% read-open rate through email. I understand there's only an 11 to 14%. So the, ma the mass, mass majority of my attempts never even get noticed or opened. So if I'm going to do the, that scooby dooby doo thing of I'm going to call and I'm going to email and then wait three days and I'm going to open, why? Because that's what you've always done? Stop it. Okay? You need to magnify and amplify. Now, without scaring you guys to death, that is my follow-up strategy. However, that is not my engagement strategy. That is there to escalate, provoke, escalate, provoke, those are good words, to get that some type of action. However, when there's any type of action if somebody responds to one of my email templates, if somebody responds to my manual email, if somebody calls me back from my voicemail, if somebody answers the phone when I call them, if somebody texts me, if there's any type of manual engagement, all that automation stops. I don't care if it's day one or it's day 90. It all stops and it's on a case-by-case -case basis. Either I made the appointment or I didn't. It's really simple. You're either pregnant or not pregnant. There's no half pregnant. So you either made the appointment or you didn't make the appointment. It's that simple. If you made the appointment, you are now in the appointment confirmation protocol, period. If you didn't make the appointment, it's only a couple scenarios. Either it's a dead opportunity, an active lead, or you had to set up a TO, or it's still cooking, it's still marinating, it's still working. And in that case, then you're going to schedule the next time and date for follow-up. I'm going to repeat that. We have a methodical, structured, diversified communication and you know, follow-up protocol. I'm going to repeat that. We've got a methodical structured, diversified, you know, communication protocol. However, it is designed strategically to escalate into communication or engagement. Once engagement has been established at any level, through any medium, all that automation stops and you are now on a case-by-case -case basis. So see, guys, I'm not that crazy. It actually makes sense. Now, keeping it moving. Everything is mapped out in these slides here, but it was way better instead of showing you these graphs and you're like, oh, my God, that's a lot of stuff. It's all in here. You can review the slide deck a little bit later. I'm going to get to the punchline. A couple of things I want you to be able to do is make sure that you are have a library of unique email templates. This goes into building the CRM. Not just, you know, you have to have compelling subject lines. And this might seem basic, but my God, I've been doing this for almost 20 years and still in 2017, I mean, we're cloning things, man. We, we're, we're printing body parts with laser printers. We're going to Mars. We have cars that park themselves, but we got emails that still suck and we want to blame the lead source providers. We have, you can't even spell your name, Brian, you spell it brain. 
for you, Brian, out there, no offense. But I've seen this. I've seen people misspell their names, misspell the dealerships. You know, there's grammar, you know, messed ups. Here's the reality. You need to develop unique email templates that are strategically designed. Compelling subject lines, relevant text content, optimized for mobile delivery, proper calls to action, etc. Additionally, you've got videos. Check out this one. This is sick right here. This is awesome. It's one of my best video emails that we've ever created. Hello, Hera from Ziegler BMW of Orland Park. I'm the general manager, and I know you recently inquired in our internet department about buying a vehicle, and I heard that you weren't interested in the vehicle anymore, and I just wanted to make sure that we did everything possible to fill all your needs, or if we found the car, we didn't find the car, if there's something else that I could do price-wise or find the proper vehicle for you. I'm here to let you know that you're welcome to contact me, and my email is billohara at zagteam.com, or you can call me direct at 708-460-4545. Thank you. Okay, people, let me just tell you what that is. That is a video TO. That's programmed in the CRM. Every time somebody marks the lead dead, the general manager of a billion-dollar dealer group turns around and personally does a video TO automatically without thinking. You know how much money they've saved? You know how many like, things that slip through the cracks that he's caught just by having that video? And you know what? Just like size does matter, guess what else matters? Quality matters, folks. Again, stop with the ghetto video cameras and all that shaky-bakey stuff. We are in a different world. I've been doing video, and that's how I got my book deal, because I'm the one that brought video optimization to the entire automotive industry back in 2006, 11 years. Five out of the seven NADA conventions have been on video expertise. I know video very, very well. I'm telling you right now, it does matter. Maybe for video testimonials, you could get away with the shaky hand or whatever it is or the, you know, the, the, the cheap-looking background. But when you're turning around and doing a diversified library of email templates, you know, you're doing how-tos, abouts, et cetera, you want high-quality footage. You want to have a real camera, theoretically, that shoots in 4K. You are a multi-million dollar to a multi-billion dollar operation. Stop treating this like it's like the 80s or 90s or early 2000s with video. You want to make sure that you only have one shot to make a first impression. I love video, but I love quality video. Keeping it moving. Develop unique templates, templates for each, very messages, call to actions. You know, you should have text message templates. You should have voicemail script templates. So if you believe in a diversified library of email templates, if you believe in a diversified library of, um, you know, uh, that type of situation, I would diversify my library of text templates, chat templates, uh, voicemail templates. Phone philosophy, woof, this is strong as hell. You ready, guys? Ladies, gentlemen, this is my graphic right here. Most people... I've never, never, I've trained 1,100 rooftops, and I've trained over 18,000, almost 19,000 automotive professionals in the last 13 years I've owned my company. And guess what? It never fails. I, I'll give this as a blanket statement. Mystery shop your competitors. Mystery shop four or five people. I guarantee you four, three or four of them are going to suck, and one of them is going to be okay. It's very, very, very rare that you're going to find somebody that's a unicorn that's amazingly great on the phones. Here's why. Because what happens is they start with very little skill, strategy, training, motivation, inspiration, excitement in the, in the part of the call. Then they eat their way throughout the end of the call. And at the end, it takes so much effort to try to sell the car, the appointment, or what have you. So at Dealer Synergy, we believe that like energy, it can't be created or destroyed, just repurposed. So what I would like you to do is turn that triangle upside down. I want you to, instead of putting a little bit of focus at the peak, you know, in the beginning, I want you to put a massive amount. Realize, understand, and accept you only have one shot to make a first impression. So you want to put all your effort in, and then each step will build on to the next step. That way, as you see how I reversed the, the graph here, how I reversed it, is by the time you get to the close, resistance will be futile. Exactly. By the time you get to the close, it'll be that much easier. So just like you have a road to the sale, you have a road to the appointment process. So my steps are really simple. Greeting, uh, ask permission to speak, state purpose of the call, pace the conversation, Qualify question asking the big Q, which is, have you ever purchased a vehicle on before? And then it's going to be identify expectations, wants, wishes, etc., cetera, um, and implement rebuttals. Step seven is transition and validate. And step eight is value package proposition. Step nine is trial close. Step 10 is close. Folks, let me tell you this. It might seem like a lot. It's not. You could turn around and, and, and go on YouTube. I've got tons of my examples that are here or Shameless plug, you could go to Bradley Demand and you could find it you know, in detail. But the idea is this. 
it doesn't take that long. The first four steps take me 37 seconds. I'm actually blow my clients away. What I do when I'm training is I write the number 37 down. I put it in a piece of paper. I let one of my, my attendees or my trainees hold it, and then they don't know what it is. Then I put my stopwatch on my iPhone on, and I just start going through steps one through four in dialogue real time with one of the people at the dealership. And I turn on and I flip my phone over, and I'm really within a, a tenth of a second you know, to maybe a second you know, off. So I usually say about 30, between 36 and 37 seconds. That's how long it takes me to get from step one through step four in my process on an outbound phone call. Step five is another five to ten seconds. So it literally takes me less than one minute to get through half of my phone process because all the first part is it's the greeting, ask person to speak, state purpose of the call, and pace the conversation. Those are nothing special. That's just basic phone etiquette and phone skills 101. There's nothing special there. My program kicks in when I ask the qualifying question, have you ever purchased a vehicle line before? Dr. Covey said, seek first to understand and then to be understood. Step six, I ask this question. Just so I know, what were you looking to accomplish by going online? Oh, my God, that's a, that's a novel idea. Let me ask him. Let me ask him. What were you looking to accomplish by going online? The top seven reasons why people are going online are, write them down, price, availability, convenience. I hate car salesmen, research, trade, and credit. And guess what? I got 108 beast, ridiculously powerful responses, how to respond and answer and, and you know, uh, meet the expectations 108 different responses or rebuttals for the top seven reasons why people are calling to phone up or submitting an internet purchase request. So now, putting it together, as you see here, research, availability, convenience, trade, and I hate car salesmen, credit, and, and you know, um, what if this happens, what if that happens, right? Now, before I go into the next part of this just really quick, I want to say something else. This is really big, folks. My process here is this, the script, and here's where people screw up. Dealers, GMs, please, managers, listen to this. The script, if you think the script is going to make you successful or not, somebody done told you a lie. There's three things that's going to make you dominate phones. Write them down, commit them to memory, or be complacent with mediocrity. All right, ready? One, the scripting is designed to do one thing. Identify wants, wishes, expectations. Your word tracks, your objections and rebuttals are there to designed to do one thing, meet the expectations. And then your dealership's unique value package proposition, what is different and better at your store, what you do for military, law enforcement, for females, for first-time shoppers, what you do for, uh, you know, price shoppers, availability shoppers, you know, credit shoppers, whatever. The way, your value package is how you exceed their expectations. All right, so that's a lot of information. You're probably drowning or drinking from a fire hose, but look. I respect you, and if you're not there making appointments, selling cars for yourself and your family, I'm going to give you a crap load of information. If you apply it, it will equal transformation. So again, what I want you to be able to do is this. You ready? Remember, three things. Identify, meet, and exceed. Identify, meet, and exceed. Now, you're going to hate me for this. I'm sorry, but think of the, uh, the Wizard of Oz. Lions and tigers and bears, oh my, right? That's the cadence. Identify, meet, and exceed. Identify, meet, and exceed. Identify, meet, and exceed. I want you rolling over in the middle of the night and your spouse turns around and kicks you and like, what the hell are you saying? I don't know. Identify, meet, and exceed. Commit it to memory. That's what you want to do. You want to identify a prospect's wants, wishes, expectations. You want to meet them and then you want to exceed them. How? You use your scripts. If you don't have any, go get somebody to help you. Anybody. Obviously, there's someone on the phone, I'm just saying, but again, anybody is better than nobody. Get a coach. Get training. Get scripts. The scripts are going to be designed to do only one thing, though. Be realistic. Identify wants, wishes, expectations. Next, get your word track up. Get your word game up. Begin with end result in mind. Play chess, not checkers, man. I mean, if you're doing internet sales, BDC phones, you do the same thing every day, all day, every day. It's the same thing. Price, availability, convenience. I hate car sales and research, trade, and credit. Start creating a bank. Start creating a library. Start creating an asset pool of responses. And that's going to be how you meet their expectations. But for you to blow their minds, for you to exceed their expectations, you need your dealership to come strong with your value package proposition. What do you do different and better than everybody else? And don't say the same redundant Mickey Mouse things like, uh, we're family owned and operated. We, you know, we'll give you uh, oil change and we're, you know, we'll do good. Stop it. Everybody says that. Folks, when was the last time you heard a dealership say on the phones or internet or in an email, yo, you know what? In the region of 39, I'm 36. I'll probably lose your floor mat, but give me a shot. I'll try not to script so bad. Never! Everybody's going to claim divinity. Everybody's the best. Everybody's number one. 
So you need to scream through all of that vapor and all of that basic stuff, and you need to clearly articulate what is your value package proposition. Because remember, price is only relevant with the absence of value. I need to catch my breath, damn it. <laughs> you need to train in inbound scripts, outbound scripts, objections, rebuttals, etc. Develop scripts for every situation. I mean, think about like one of those old Kung Fu Shaolin monks, right? I got a blind master on my team. I can't even make this up. I got a blind gentleman named L.A. Williams. Shout out to L.A. Williams. He is the blind master. Forget about a drunken monkey. I mean, this dude is the blind master. He's blind. He jumps on an airplane, flies all over the country, and trains people how to master the phones. He can't, he can't see you. He can only see you by what you sound like. And you know what? He's got a whole library of word tracks. But think of those Shaolin monks or those, you know, uh, those warriors or even MMA. I mean, hell, look, you've got so many different comments. You've got punch, kicks, you you got elbows, you got knees, you got chokes, you got submissions. You don't just have you don't just have a slap. You don't just have a little slap, a little slap boxing. No, you got a diversified combat, you know, engagement and tactical evasion. You, this is not war. I'm trying to give you an analogy you could cling to. You need to diversify your pool of of, of responses, situational responses. You know, people responses. The way you respond to somebody that is in one category, whether they are a price shopper, convenience shopper, it might be different how you respond to somebody that is a first-time buyer that's got, you know, bad credit. You need to stop playing checkers or connect four, even worse, and start playing chess. Hi, I'm Amy with Paramount Pending. I wanted to talk to you about the unique... Auto by tell, don't jump in. We're going to overtime. Come on, I deserve it. We have a record number of webinar attendees. They want this information. We're going to go five minutes of overtime. That's it. We've been family owned and operated for the past 25 years and will remain that way for years to come. So your hard earned money stays right here in the community where it belongs. Four is always left at Route 4 Perimeter Hyundai. What does that mean? For starters, we will honor any legitimate quote from another dealer. Not only that, we offer $100 for every customer that you refer to our dealership just as a way of saying thank you. Every vehicle also comes with America's best warranty, a 10-year, 100,000-mile powertrain. There's a number of special programs here at the dealership to make your life easier. Need to save time? Don't fret. We also call ahead expedited paperwork, which means that we can have all your paperwork ready to sign before you even get to the dealership. We also offer free appraisals, free delivery to your home or office, VIP email discount, complimentary shuttle service, courtesy loaner cars, one year of free basic maintenance, and three lifetime safety and maintenance inspections. We even offer an express oil change service. So they weren't wasting time waiting around for your oil to get changed, like you would at any other dealership. In addition to these huge savings, we have a variety of unique value packages for customers from all walks of life. If you're a first time buyer, college student, military service member, firefighter, police officer, or senior citizen, then your first payment is on us. Not only that, we're also offering $500 bonus cash on your purchase and 10% off for all services, parts, and accessories. Credit union members who finance it up have no payment for 90 days. We here at Paramus Hyundai love serving our community and invite you to experience what we have to offer. We highly encourage you to take advantage of these huge savings and become part of the Route 4 family. Okay, that's how you sell on value and differentiate yourself. Conclusion, infrastructure CRM phones, ICP. You down with ICP? Hell yeah, you know me, right? You down with ICP? That's infrastructure CRM and phones. You're going to be singing that all day. You down with ICP? Yeah, you know me. Infrastructure CRM phones. The, if the internet and phones are the new show, you need to make them your number one priority. Your number one priority. Yeah, man. We're going there. You only got one shot. One shot to make a first impression. You only got one shot to get that money. You know what I'm saying? So you need to follow with every lead, make every phone call, and make it count. That's all I'm saying. Thank you so much for your time, everybody. Please follow me on, um, I have over 8,000 videos on Sean B. Bradley TV on YouTube, Flickr, you know, I'm on Instagram, you know, Facebook, LinkedIn, 
follow me, and you can ask me anything. Cassie, thank you for letting me go two minutes over. It's on you. Thank you so much. I'm honored to be able to present to you today. Wow, Sean. That was a lot of fantastic information. I, I, I especially loved your slide about proper lead allocation. You know, I think that's one of the biggest challenges that a lot of our dealers face. Um, we definitely have a few comments and a few questions, so if you can stick around for about three minutes, Sean, so we can get these answered, that'd be great. I'm here for you. Fantastic. Um, all right, so the first question we have is, will we be getting a copy of these slides? And the answer is absolutely, you most definitely will be getting a link that will take you to a slide share that has all of these slides, because there were some that Sean had skipped through, so we want to make sure that you have the, uh, the ability to view everything that was maybe missed. Um, so you're welcome to look at those there. Um, Sean, what is the best way to leave a voicemail so that you have a guaranteed callback? This question is from Jim. Okay, you know what's great? There's no such thing as guarantees in anything, but I'm going to show you a trick, and I don't think I've done this publicly. Watch what I'm about to do right here. First thing that I'm going to do is I'm going right now to say this, create a library of voicemail scripts. Begin with the end result in mind. You don't want to say, hi, this is Sean from ABC Motors, please call me back. What I would say is make sure that you have a CTA, like a call to action. Sell them on why it's important for them to call you or why they should expect your call. But here's a cool thing that you could do. Use YouTube as a soundboard. This is what I've done. I use YouTube like a soundboard, and I actually have real soundboards, but this is like the cheap person's way to MacGyver it. I'm going to type in real quick Bing Crosby, right? Bing Crosby. This is hysterical, guys. Bing Crosby, happy holidays. And I've actually done this because you guys are on a webinar, so this is like the phone. So, so I'm going to queue it up. Hold on. It's going to take a second. I probably have some stupid ads. We believe that every time is the most refreshing pitch. Okay. Here we go. Watch this. Okay, so I, I queue it up right here. So here's what I do. This is a great thing you could do to diversify and, and differentiate your voice messages. In addition to having a library of, of different voicemail scripts, I would use a soundboard. And I wouldn't necessarily do this on the first day, but I would actually queue this up. And what I would do is on YouTube, if it's the holiday season, for example, and let's just say it's, it's Cassie, right? I'm going to call Cassie. I'm going to ring the phone, ring, and then I'm going to go like this. May the calendar keep ringing. Happy holiday. Hey, Cassie, this is Sean Bradley. I'm calling from ABC Motors and Auto Tell. I just wanted to first wish you a happy holiday. Stop. How freaking awesome is that? You want to break through the noise and the basicness of all the basic dealerships out there. Folks, if you want the things that the average person doesn't have, you've got to be willing to do the things the average person isn't willing to do. Legally, ethically, morally speaking. Disclaimer for Auto Tell. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> if that's a great strategy, Sean. Thanks for sharing that. All right, the Pleasure. next question is from Miles. He would like to know if that Hyundai video is on YouTube. Yes, it is. If he, e if he emails me or Facebook messages me, I'll send him the link. Perfect. Um, all right, the next question is, what do you do when your BDC is on board with everything but an older salesman isn't on board. Is it possible to be successful? And this is from Crystal. Yeah, it, it absolutely is. And here's the reality is that there's different dynamics in the, to it. And I, I try to have a lot of humor in this webinar, but I'm gonna, that's a very serious question. It depends. You know, it depends on – it has to start from the dealer principal and GM. They've got to have a culture of, of righteousness that this is important. And if I'm the dealer or GM and I believe that the internet and phones are the new showroom – Failure is not an option, neither is mediocrity, and neither is dinosaurs that are going to, um, you know, uh, potentially harm the department, whether it's intentionally or unintentionally. So I would say the first thing needs to happen, the culture's got to be there with the dealer principal, GM, because they have the power to enforce accountability, uh, usage, attitude, etc. You got to remember, if the dealer principal and the GM and the GSM, the sales managers, aren't enthused about the internet, they don't take it seriously. They don't have benchmark expectations of minimum excellence. Then anybody could do whatever they want. So that's the first political answer. Second thing is this: you either have two types of people. Remember, I like my saying: you're the pregnant, not pregnant. You either have people that really don't give a shit, unfortunately, and you got people that are just out of their element. You can't help people that don't really care about themselves and they're of the codependent or dependent mindset and they're not good people. I'm not a magician, but I can tell you how you can help people that are just uncomfortable. Try to imagine 
being I can empathize, man. I'm 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 40 years old and I think I'm pretty damn savvy until I get with my eight-year-old daughter or my six-year-old daughter or very humbly my nine-year-old son and they basically show me how much I don't know about technology or about basic stuff. It, 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 it's really humbling, especially who I am. So by maybe pulling that salesperson to the side and just giving them some basic maybe like like remedial or basic, you know, training, basic support, basic mentoring. I mean, that might be what it is. You can't necessarily do that in an open setting because they're proud, especially if they've been in the industry for a long time. They might feel offended. They might feel stupid. They might feel old. They might feel a whole bunch of things. So, again, management and ownership support and direction and reinforcement is critical. Second, you, you got to profile what type of person you have. You either have somebody that's just uncomfortable, that's frustrated, that doesn't know, or you got somebody that just really doesn't care and doesn't play well in the sandbox. Again, I'm not even going to touch on this webinar, how to handle someone that doesn't play good in the sandbox. I think you can tell by my personality how to handle that. But I would say the person that you have that's, that, that's a good person, he's just really antiquated and really frustrated and you're feeling some kind of way, show him some love. I mean, honestly, show him some love. Take him, take him to the side and, and try to mentor them. You know, and again, you'd be shocked with how much, how, how much evolution and how much trans, you know, change would happen just from a little bit of you know, tender love and care, sincerely. All right, Sean, our next uh, question is from Paula. Why wouldn't you call first and then email? By calling, you're able to capture the real need of the customer if they pick up the call. Okay, Paula, you ready? You complete me. You, you, you complete me because that's what I, I do. I don't email. What I said is emails go out. In the dealer synergy, remember, I'm trying to pack 18 years into this one hour, so that's a good clarity point. It's a great question. In dealer synergy, ask any of my clients, I do not allow them to email at all. You know what I mean? I program, and we program ridiculously awesome email action plans. Now, some of you might be gasping for air. Go get your oxygen shank. It is what it is. I turn around, and I don't respond manually through email. I just have ass-kicking email templates that look like they're manual emails. And what I do is I let the CRM actively deploy emails. And what I do is what Paula just said, 1,000% of my time on fresh leads is to follow up with phone calls. So I'm of the same exact mindset and that's exactly what I train. And I ne you'll never find a video online out of the 8,000 free ones that are on YouTube for me that I ever endorse, you know, sending emails out. I'm always about the phone calls, 100%. Here's another tip right there, Paula, is I also, when I make the phone calls, I don't read the damn CRM. Because I have big BDCs and big internet departments that have 12 to 25 people in the BDC. Do the math. If they're making 120 calls a day, hell, even 100 calls a day, and they have only an 11 to 14% connection ratio, that means 80 to 90% of people they're not going to get on the phone. So if you sit there and, and open up the internet purchase request and read the content and then call, look at all the downtime. All I, I've calculated anywhere from 180 to 290 hours a month are wasted on reading emails and then calling people that never answer the phone. So you just read all that stuff for no damn reason. So you complete me, Paula. I agree with you. <laughs> Fantastic. All right, our last question here, Sean, is from Veronica. Um, you talked about great, the great times to call, but when is it too early to start calling? Uh, great question. When is it too early? Again, that's going to be regional and cultural, but I'd say I, I'm giving national advice here. I'd say it depends. If you're doing service, you know, we're talking about this is not service or this is not, you know, BDC. The title of this webinar was Internet and Phones are the new showroom. So if it's Internet purchase requests and phone leads, I will not call somebody before 9 a.m. I just won't do it. Now, if it's a service, you know, BDC, and if it's for scheduling service appointments or confirming them or CSI, that might be different. But for this webinar, I do not ever advocate calling, you know, before 9 a.m., ever. Perfect. Sean, thank you so much for presenting today. I think we all learned a lot of information. It was great. And dealers, thank you so much for joining and hanging out a little bit longer as well. There will be a three-question survey after the webinar closes, and Sean and I would really appreciate it if you take one minute to fill it out. This concludes today's webinar. Make it a great day. Thank you all so much. It was an honor.